Welcome back to your desk, project manager. You have an email from your manager, Deb. It seems that Sal had contacted her because Sally had been speaking with Kathy and they had come up with an idea and Owen was on board. Deb asks for an OOM, an order of magnitude estimate. Your mind immediately wanders to the cone of uncertainty because you know that at the beginning of a project the details of what need to be built are not fully clear and as you get closer to the project end you have a much clearer concept of what you're building and what all the variables are. There will be an installment of Project Management Mystery Theater on the topic of estimation. The important facts for this video are that your customer, Kathy, is asking for a software widget that will require your team to write some code. The good news is you've had experience with very similar projects in the past, so you are able to come up with an order of magnitude based on experience. Based on how such projects have gone in the past, you make the determination that this is a small project that should take three months beginning to end from requirements through deployment. Your manager, Deb, asks you to prepare an initial project plan. As you begin planning and scheduling, you start to think about the constraints that are facing you. This matrix illustrates, in a very simple way, the questions that face you and the decisions you need to make. And the challenge is you can't have everything you want. You can't have unlimited amount of resources and an unlimited amount of time to do your work nor can you put in an unlimited number of features. But also, you cannot give all of these fixed values. If you have a fixed number of resources, let's say three, and you have a fixed number of features, let's say 300, you can't then say, let's get it done in three days. In this example, if you want to meet the schedule of three days, you may have to either reduce the feature set or increase the resources. In this case, Probably the only solution would be to reduce the feature set because simply communicating the plan to a large number of people takes time. And by the time the whole team understands the project, your three days will have passed. So it is very unlikely that by increasing the number of resources, you can meet a deadline that tight. There will be more about this in the estimation video. But for now, we've already made these decisions. You were given a set of features and you had an existing team. Based on that existing team and that set of features, you came up with a schedule. Since it is still early in the project, and in fact you just found out about this project this morning, there's only one piece that you're absolutely sure of, and that is who the resources will be. You have not yet fully documented the requirements, so let's start with the one thing we know for sure and build out from there. As you begin to build out your project schedule, there's one thing you know for sure, the resources on the project. For requirements, you have your analyst, Anna. For design, there's Archie, the architect. For development, we have Dave. And when development is done, we have tests to do the testing. And once the testing is complete, the software is deployed by Ned, the network admin. So the first thing you do is you open up Project 2010. You know who your resources are, so let's go ahead and add them in. Go to your Team Planner on the Resource tab, and select the Resource Sheet. Enter in all the information about your resources. This is our entire team. Now that all the resources have been entered, go to the Task Sheet, Gantt Chart View. Based on our initial estimate, we are electing to use the waterfall life cycle. The reasons for this are mainly due to experience. We've completed several projects like this in the past using the waterfall life cycle, and we had relatively few problems and mostly success. Please see the other installment of Project Management Mystery Theater that discusses the risks and rationales involved in using the waterfall life cycle. Something interesting to note about the waterfall life cycle that distinguishes it from most other life cycles. 
Most other life cycles break the schedule up into two overlapping and parallel streams. One stream describes the phases that the project is in, while the other stream describes the type of work being performed. It's also called the workflow. Oftentimes, the phases describe the big picture from the perspective of the whole project and the whole team. So, for instance, you might have a phase called inception, which is the initial phase, the opening act of a project. But during that phase, you might have the workflow of requirements gathering occurring, the initial requirements, of course. In fact, during inception, you could have a development workflow occurring. Perhaps prototypes are being built. But in the waterfall life cycle, there are no such distinctions. There are no parallel streams. There's just one stream, and the phase you're in and the workflow are identical. So the first phase is requirements. Now that we're going to start entering tasks into our project, we also should make sure we do a couple of other things. So let's go up into Project and go to the Project Information dialog. Let's review a couple things here and make sure they're consistent with our planning. For instance, the start date. For many reasons, you might want to make sure this accurately reflects when all work for this particular software project began which many times could have happened before you as the project manager became involved. So be sure you're aware of that date because you may have to go back in order to create a thorough plan. Also, the start date will be a baseline from which all automatic date updates will occur. The best way to schedule tasks is not to schedule them based on dates, but based on the duration of the task the magnitude of the task in other words how long does the task take and then you allow your schedule to update automatically by simply changing the duration as opposed to changing the date and we'll see examples of that shortly so all our scheduling will occur from the project start date and also to follow this best practice we will make sure that all new tasks are automatically scheduled and the dates are automatically calculated by Microsoft Project so let's quickly build the skeleton of a waterfall project. Underneath each phase, I'm going to insert a default task. Don't worry, I'll come back and refine it later, but that's just to make it easier to get the skeleton set up. So underneath requirements, I'm going to have a requirements task. Underneath design, I'll have a design task, etc. Now I notice that the top task is still set to manual scheduling, so I'm going to make sure that that one is also automatically scheduled. Now my skeleton of my project here does not look very hierarchical the way that it should look. Requirements tasks need to come under requirements. So I right click that task and you see the little green arrows. I indent it to the right and now it comes under requirements. And I do the same for the design task and the development task. So here is my basic structure now. Now I just noticed there's something else I should also include in each of these phases. At the end of each phase we're going to pass a milestone. To add a milestone select the row directly below where you want to enter the milestone and on the task menu click milestone. Then provide a name for your new milestone Notice that the milestone appears on the Gantt chart as a diamond. So I'm going to fill in the rest of these tasks and milestones and then we'll review the completed plan. So this is the complete initial list of tasks, but the schedule by no means is complete yet. Before I do a complete review of the schedule with you, I want to fill in some more details. For instance, for each task, I want to provide the resources that will perform that task. So I'm going to 
select the resource names. For the kickoff meeting, I'm going to invite everybody. For documenting the business requirements, I'll have Sally work with Kathy. Creating the functional spec, I'll have Anna work with Sally. Now I'm going to go ahead and just fill in all the resources. Now that all the resources are filled in, we can continue on and set up some of the other properties of our project. If you wish to review the resources that have been assigned to each task, you can download this sample project file in PDF format from our Scribdy site. Please see the description below the video for the link. All right, next I'll set up the predecessors. And predecessors are covered in another installment of Project Management Mystery Theater. And predecessors, of course, help us set dependencies between our tasks. So, for instance, one task should not begin before another one is completed. Predecessors easily allow us to create that relationship. Now, since we're using the waterfall model, there are some very obvious predecessors. Let's assume that we started on October 19th. And that was when we kicked off our requirements phase. Well, one thing we definitely know is that we cannot proceed into the design phase using Waterfall until we've completed requirements. So for line 10, design, I'm going to say the predecessor is line 1. Because everything under line 1, and that will include every subtask under requirements, all of these have to be completed in order for this to be completed and only once this is completed can this proceed now I've got a bunch of question marks here and you should know by now that that means these are only estimates now we can leave those as estimates if we want and that indicates a certain amount of uncertainty but for the purposes of this example we're going to set those to actual times we're going to create an actual completed schedule here, not using estimates, but with what we believe to be the actual values we're going to follow. Our kickoff meeting is going to be the first thing that happens in the project, and it's going to happen on the very first day of the project. There will be no predecessors other than the beginning of the project, and the kickoff meeting is an all-day meeting planned in the conference room, so I'm going to enter a 1, hit return, and there's no longer a question mark because this is no longer an estimate. This is now a planned, scheduled value. Once the kickoff meeting occurs, other things can begin. For instance, documenting the business requirements can then begin. So I will set a predecessor for row number three as row number two. You can immediately see that this turns blue. In fact, a whole bunch of things turn blue because that change that I just made affected all of those values and it cascaded down. As you change the durations and as you move things and as you set up predecessors and dependencies, tasks further down get pushed out. Now documenting the business requirements for this, Kathy and Sally will be doing this and we're going to give them seven days to complete that. So by Friday, they should be done. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up all the predecessors before we continue with the demonstration. So here we have a pretty informative initial project schedule. Our first order of magnitude estimate was a three-month project and you can see we stayed pretty well in that realm. We're going to start on October 19th and we're going to finish on January 23rd. We've allowed ourselves 18 days for requirements, 12 days for design, 15 days for development, 17 days for testing, and then 7 days to deploy. I've added all the resource names, as you saw, and I've assigned them appropriately to the different meetings and to the different approvals. And you can go through this when you, if you uh, download it from the link below in the description, and you can, you can have a look at who's assigned to what. You'll also see that I've added some other users for instance, during deployment, we want to get operations involved. We have other videos in the Project Management Mystery Theater series that will go much more deeply into the different detailed features and functionalities of Microsoft Project. But the purpose of this was to show the creation of the initial project schedule for a project that's following the waterfall software development lifecycle.